Hey, what's up everyone? Mike Strati here with Imperial Tropicals on another fun Friday. So we're having good weather today. Sun's out, it was a little bit cool this morning and yesterday morning, but it's warmed up really nice throughout the day. So really couldn't ask for much better, better weather. So, hey, what's up? Make sure you guys let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. Hey, what's up, JW? Um, Ahmad, what's up? Mr. Sand Devil, Long Island, Robert. Uh, I was asking, got yellow rams, uh, gold rams? I think we do. So uh, I know we're out of the German blue, but I think we got the gold. Hey, what's up, cat? Hey, what's up, Jesus? Superior Guppy, Tom from Malibu. I bet Malibu's having some good weather too. <laughs> nice. Paul Jones, uh, Lori, Aqua, Apprentice, Mods already telling you guys, make sure you hit that like button. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, stream went from three waiting to 29. Yep, got 38 people on right now. Domingo, JW says he bought his first discus a few days ago and is being picky with food. Any suggestions? All right, so discus, JW, there's a lot of poor quality discus on the market. So, you know, a lot of times you're going to have to rehabilitate them if you bought them from most, most sellers. So, um, you know, couple things is make sure you have them in soft water higher temperatures you know 82 would be minimum they like 80 up to 84 would also be good and they like frozen foods so uh, they're really bad about getting uh, sunken bellies you know especially if they've been shipped to you so you know it wouldn't hurt to um, either worm the fish or use some metronidazole to uh, clean out their gut so um, really depends on who you bought them from what kind of quality discus they were you know in the states there's a couple good guys that have some really good quality discus but not a lot so there's you know um, overseas the poor quality ones they'll actually hormone them when they're really small to make them when they're about a half dollar size to have bright colors and Usually you can buy those online or at a pet store for 20 to 30 bucks and that's not a very good quality discus. If you're gonna get quality discus, you're looking you know, on the low end, 30 to $50 for good quality discus. And that's at a small size. So, all right, let me get some of these questions. Hello, Gabrielle. Robert says, no, I got mine from y'all. Yes, <laughs> they are nice. Well, then they should be good to go. I don't remember selling any discus recently. I'm trying to remember. Oh, you might've came out and picked them up. So um, frozen foods, high temps. They might just be adjusting to your water. Make sure you're using um, RO water. You know, make sure the water's soft. But email us if you got any more questions on them. There's a little video lag on my end. Audio is good. Yes, I've been looking at some of those Wi-Fi boosters and there's a good chance that we're going to install some in the next week or so. I was real busy this week. So So Cal says, give those likes. So if you don't know how to like the video, you have to disable comments and then it will allow you to hit the like button. And also, if this is your first time watching, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notifications whenever um, we go. I don't know how many you need. I bet mom and them could use some of them. Them old chairs and some of them blinds. I'll take up to 10. 
some of these questions uh, Andrew's also saying that we lost audio um, well, let me know now I'm gonna move to a different spot <laughs> Nick 717 I guess I was picking up somebody's phone I don't know what that was <laughs> Sierra's saying she could hear my parents I don't know let me see if she's on the phone over here. Hey, what's up, Sierra? Was it my mom or my dad? She probably would know. I don't know, that's kind of crazy. It must have jumped um, audio. So. <laughs> Stone Squatch says, I must have been eavesdropping on somebody's phone conversation. Uh, she heard them both. Well, that's cool. I'm gonna have to play that back and uh, try to figure out what happened. All right, so all good. <laughs> Joe Cat, who is the old lady talking? That's crazy. Yeah, well, hopefully they didn't say nothing inappropriate. So, all right, good deal, good deal. Try to get through these. Cat saying that was weird. Some older folks phone convo. Hopefully she wasn't yelling at him. Uh, thank you, David. About the lawn chairs. About the blinds. Oh, about the hunting blinds. <laughs> That's what it was. That's funny. I'm going to try to figure out what happened. Daniel's asking, do you guys give tours of your facility? Uh, let me get out of the road. The guys are driving in. I uh, live in New Orleans. Would love to come visit. Yes, we do. Um, we do them every week. So on Thursdays and Fridays, we allow appointments. And you could come by. And on the appointment contact, it'll say that, you know, we request that you buy fish when you get here. But um, if you're out of town visiting, then it's not a requirement. We love to show people around. So every week we have a lot of people come by and um, we show them around. But it's good if you could schedule the appointment. It makes it a lot easier for us. In fact, Sierra, who's on, she hooked that up. So it makes it a lot easier for people to schedule appointments instead of me just having people randomly stop by. It, it makes us available for you when you do show up and we could give you the, the full tour of everything. So yeah, yeah, we like doing that. So uh, yeah, take a day off, Sierra, come see us. Do it on a Friday. So everybody would like to see you again. G Bear, Sierra is gone, but not forgotten. And she's not gone forever. So she's gonna come back and visit us. So uh, Tom saying he'll trade me fish for lobster. Uh, I like lobster. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe Cat saying, I heard I say, let's give away free fish every day. Everybody watching today. <laughs> so we haven't done a, a giveaway and that's something that we, we need to do. Uh, it's been really bad weather, not this week and not too bad last week, but the shipping has been a big pain and we've been trying to get caught up after the holidays. So really don't want to add a lot of extra shipping to that. So uh, we basically, you know, now that we're caught up, we'll probably start doing some more giveaways. Um, amoxicillin is not an antibiotic that we've used um, um, recently. I, I would say probably back in the day it was used, but we don't use a lot of antibiotics. It's really only as a last resort that we would use antibiotics, you know. Um, yes, Alan, if you're out of town for a tour, you could pick out fish while you're here and we'll set it up to um, ship to you 
you know, on whatever date you're ready. So TRG wants to see the Bozmani from the, the picture that I posted. Absolutely, we'll go in there and show you guys. Um, so Dave Patton's asking if um, we have natural springs in our ponds. This is a good question because there, there is um, a lot of springs in Florida and we do not have springs on our property, but we do have the water tables not very far down. So we do get a lot of, like if you dig down, you know, four or five feet, water will start seeping in. So it's, um, you know, uh, you know, not spring water, but it is groundwater coming up. Oh, Superior is asking how many peacocks and hats should I keep in a 400 gallon? A lot. <laughs> That's a big thing. So, um, you know, if you didn't know, we started a, a, a Facebook group uh, for Imperial Tropicals that you could go to and get a lot of these answers because I answer them every day. So does Rochelle, so does Jacob about, you know, how to set up a tank or what kind of amount of fish, you know, we can put in a tank. And we started this group right around Christmas time and it's just taken off. I mean, I'm like, wow, there's so many people on it that's helping each other and it's a great community community so if you have facebook make sure you join that group so um you know it's been really helpful and we are going to have some admins i think last friday i asked everybody what they thought about that so we are going to you know get a couple volunteers to be admins on it so what one thing we're going to do with that is we're going to rotate out the you know whoever's being an admin um, once a month, you know, we'll pick out two new people to be admins. So it's constantly, you know, fresh and people aren't feeling like it's a burden being an admin. Um, you know, this is our first time really having a page where we needed an admin, but, um, I think it will help because I personally, I have a hard time just keeping up with our regular Imperial Facebook and Instagram and YouTube chat. It's hard for me to keep up all of it, but I think if we, you know, had, you know, two admins, I think would be plenty starting off with. And, you know, every month we, we let two new people be an admin. And if somebody wants to stay on longer, then maybe that's a possibility too. But it's Imper the name of the group is Imperial Tropicals Fish Keepers. So if you go to our Facebook page, you'll see a little tab that says join group and you could join our Imperial Tropicals group and it's, it's pretty awesome because you get to see what our fish look like in people's tanks, you know, like at our facility, you know, we don't have a lot of really new tanks like our customers do. So you get to see what our fish look like in people's tanks. So it's pretty cool. I like it. It's been a lot of fun so far. And what I like about it is just a very helpful community that's helping people, you know, get, get better at keeping fish, you know. So, Ian Broom, what's up? Love watching on my lunch break. Everybody hit that like button. Thank you, Ian. Uh, Nick717, how's the orange, the black orange litho baits doing? ETA on hitting the website. Need some females for my um, mail. So, they're doing good. So, we grew up the first batch and pulled out, you know, sorted everything out for our next group of breeders. So, now we have a lot of uh, brood stock on them to where you know in the beginning maybe we had like 15 now we've got like probably 60 or 70 breeders so you know um we will they will be coming on soon you you probably have to let me talk to angie um when she expects them to be ready right now with it being winter time and i'll walk out to the ponds and show you guys but everything's under plastic so at least all the africans are so it's a little bit more difficult for us to go in there and, and catch them up. So a lot of this stuff is just going to probably keep growing up until springtime when the plastic comes off. And then we're going to have a, a lot a lot of more fish available because it's a lot easier for us to get in there and get them. But I'll show you the plastic. Let me flip the screen around. So right now the guys have brought in some fish. Hey, what's up, Steven? guys have brought in some fish out of some of the ponds on the other side of the property and in fact i was going to show you what they brought in because they brought in some big yellow blaze that we've been growing up and i'm super excited about that so um 
you know, let's go in there. Actually, I'm gonna show you the Bozmani because those are on the way. Somebody was asking to see that fish that was in the picture. So I think I showed him off two weeks ago, but I will um, show you. Rock is saying what type of condition and habitat the sulfur heads breed in. Uh, pretty easy fish to breed. So you just need a, um, you know, big enough tank, <laughs> you know, have a little bit of structure in the tank. They don't require a lot of structure. And I personally like, you know, sand bottoms and tanks, but you know, you create, you know, a good environment for them and condition them up and they'll be breeding in no time. Ahmad saying the video is kind of lagging. Yeah, Sammy, we do feed the ponds that are covered. The lowest temperature, um, anything below 70, they do not like, but I would say between 60 would be the absolute low. I've heard of them living in conditions even colder than that, but you know, I would say at 60, you're gonna start losing fish, you know? Somebody's asking to see the Bozeman eye that was in the, the picture. So that's them. Hey, what's up, Manny? Yeah, I know I'm missing a lot of questions, folks, but um, it's hard to uh, hard to answer them all as they come through. But I know somebody had asked about the uh, picture that I took with my phone that I posted up on Facebook. So that's them right there. That's our breeders. Oh yeah, I got good news too. We are going to be going to Indonesia next year on a collection tour for new rainbows. So my good friend from Germany, Hans, uh, messaged me yesterday and gave me the dates. So it's in the middle of March. I'm going to be going to a very remote part of the world and trying to find some new and exciting rainbow fish. So I'm super uh, stoked about it. And it's a little bit uh, nerve wracking, you know, because the area that we're going to is not been explored because there's not, it's not accessible. Um, so I'll be posting up. Yep, that's the Angito TRG. So uh, I'm super stoked about going and catching some new rainbow fish and taking all my camera equipment. Let me go get a net. Taking my camera equipment and documenting with pictures and videos and we'll also be bringing new fish back. So uh, stay tuned for more information about that. Um, all right, so I seen two people or two fish that were asked for one is the ruby reds that we have for sale. So let me show you those. There's a few males in here. Before I net them up, I'll try to show you from the top. So at this size, and the water temperature is a little bit cool still, even though we're warming up. I would say it's in the, you know, 75 degrees. So they're not in breeding dress, but you can see some of the males back there hanging around the pipe. It's funny because I go to one side and they swim to the other side. Oh, here we go. All right, so let me get that net. And I will net up some of them. Hey, what's up, Mike Ramos? Yeah, David Patton. It's in the Birdhead Island of uh, Papua New Guinea. So pretty good I, I found out you know I've been doing some research online about the island and and all its you know people that live there and there's a lot of um, tribes that live there still indigenous people and there's a few of them that have not made contact with um, the outside world and whether they're avoiding it on purpose or what but I'm, I'm kind of excited about going and um, seeing this stuff you know so there's the ruby red let's see 
there's a couple mels that are starting to show really good color. As the fish gets bigger, that red becomes more prominent throughout the body. But the, the water temperatures are a little bit chilly right now. <laughs> Steven, don't get shot by any errors. Yeah, I mean, um, it's always a concern, especially traveling, traveling, you know, to another area. Oh man, Ahmad, I appreciate that, Ahmad. I use that to help pay for my trip. <laughs> um, Ahmad just gave us um, a donation, and I'm still kind of, kind of new to all that, and I'm shocked every time somebody does it because. I'm used to like giving a service when somebody gives me something, so I appreciate that, Ahmad. All right, so uh, I didn't catch any of the really dominant males, but that's the Eureka Reds. Those are looking real nice. And we actually got some big males on those guys. So let me find let me find the yellow blaze. I know they just brought them in. Um, where did they put the yellow blaze? They just brought them in this morning, so it'll take me just a minute to find out what tanks they put them in. Oh, right here, some. Um, Aqua God's asking if we updated the um, listing on the Star Sapphires. You know, they might have updated it. I know we brought in some four inch mills recently, so there's a good chance that they did update the website. Uh, Rochelle might be able to answer that because she probably would have done it with uh, Jacob. Uh, all right, so these guys just came in out of the pond and they're looking nice. So this is the sulfur head peacock, or not peacock. Um, this is the um, yellow blaze with the baits. And they're looking good. So we should have some really big males on those guys coming up. Plenty of females. These are ones that we grew up, we put them out probably about six months ago um, at like two inches. And they're looking, um, they're looking pretty, pretty nice. Somebody else is asking about lemon jakes, so let me go ahead and show you guys the lemon jakes. Um, not a lot of big lemon jakes right now. I want to say most of them are like two and a half to three inches. So let me try to catch some of these guys up for you. And that fish doesn't really show great color until it gets a little bit bigger than what what ours are but um, regardless I will try to catch a couple of them up we've got a uh, electric blue a car that jumped over so yeah I think most of these are going to be the small male lemon jakes Hold on. sorry about that guys my camera rotated all right now we're back on schedule uh, so this is the uh, two and a half to three inch lemon jakes and they're just there's just starting to show color uh, It's a really nice strain of lemon jakes the um, Adults that we breed were f1s So these are probably I want to say three generations away from the wild so good genetics on them There's some bigger ones in here We do have some bigger ones growing up though, so it won't be long. Won't be long. There's a nice smell right there. He's, he's got some good colors. So. This is the lemon jakes that we currently have up on the website. So, Yeah, they have good color for being small and also for the water temps to be 75. You know, you guys that keep um, peacocks and haps know that a 75 is not ideal temperatures. So, you know, yeah, they're showing good colors. Um, somebody was asking about the Madokas earlier, so I'll give you a heads up on the Madokas. We probably will, they sold really well when we put them out a few weeks ago. So I do believe that we're sold out at the moment, but I do have, 
I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 more of them that we separated out because we actually had a hard time on the three inch ones because some of the females were like colored up just like males. They were really bright blue. So we separated about 30 of them out and those guys should be going back on the website here in a week or two. We just wanted to let them give them more time to acclimate. But after that, after that group, it's going to be uh, probably four months. You know, that's how long it takes for the next batch to, to get ready. So Ali is saying thank you for the beautiful Madokas. She's loving them. So that's awesome. Ali, I know, had been waiting for one for quite some time. Uh, Rock Karen is asking if we have Oscars. Yes, we do. We don't breed them here anymore. Um, I actually have a friend that breeds them, but uh, we do have some Tiger Oscars. They should be up on the website. If they're not, just let me know and email me. So, Ali saying it was well worth the wait for those uh, Madokas. <laughs> the car paying a visit, paying a visit. Yeah, the cars are jumpers. Like you guys, if you get electric blue car, make sure you have no spots in your tank that they could jump out. Cause it doesn't matter if it's a tiny hole they're going to jump jump out um all right daniel's asking how the dragon bloods are looking all right let's go take a look at the dragon bloods real quick grab my net flip the screen around um not let me flip there we go um uh, dragon bloods are always looking good it's our our most popular fish i think every male peacock tank needs a dragon blood in it so here's some of the bigger bigger guys right here uh, here's some of the younger ones starting to color up nicely there's some three inch males in here coloring up nicely so let me net up some of these three inches and show you guys what they look like Yeah, I've never seen a fish jump quite like the electric blue cars. A couple blue dragon blood males in here too. If you guys don't know that we get the blue dragon bloods from the regular dragon bloods. So there's a nice four inch dragon blood right there. So, so that's a young one right there. And the, the color will only get brighter with the warmer temperatures. So um, Joshua is saying he just posted a picture of his um, dragon blood up and he said he couldn't be happier. Yeah, the dragon bloods are hot. So it was um, last week, um, you know, we were talking about where I got the dragon blood from and gave a little bit of the, the history on, you know, where the strain originated from that we have. So really nice. So. Daniel saying he's in Tampa, want to come take a tour and get some of those. Just like I was talking about earlier, you could go on our website at the very bottom and it has an appointment um, tab. Click on that appointment and set it up. We, um, you know, we try to use that appointment page on for everybody just so we could keep, you know, straight on who's coming out, when they're coming out and making sure that they're available, you know, so. Um, Trying to think of what else. I, I showed you guys some of these rainbows. And Joe's in here doing water changes on the discus. You see they're down pretty low. Uh, Richard Terrell wants to see some Epistos. We could do that. Some of the bigger Bozmani. Um, super excited about these new Kamaka Dwarf Rainbows. They're looking really nice. Even the females on these guys look really nice with that silver, silver color. Uh, Epistos. They're pretty shy. So, and there's a young male hanging out. Let's see if I can get some of the Epistos. There's the McMaster eye. Let's see if he stays still. Try to go slow. Ah, he went good. 
but even in these 40 gallon tanks, the it's a big area for the Epistos. So you see he went back into the cave. There's some other ones out down here. There we go. Yeah, it's funny, like whenever I get near them with the camera, they take off. Yeah. That's some of the breeding, breeding, breeding groups of the pistols that we have. Here's a turquoise severum. I know we get, we're getting a lot of people ask when they're going to be ready. Oh man, they're, it's funny, as soon as you act different in front of these tanks, they, um, the fish really just kind of freak out. They're all hiding back here in the back now. So, um, somebody wants to see the feather fins. So that tank is not very good as far as the lighting goes. And I don't think you're gonna be able to see them and appreciate the colors. My lights are not working on this tank. Or I don't have lights on the side of the room right now, so. Eventually, I will um, get some lights and some new tanks. There's some of the fronts growing up right there, some of the bimways. But these are all really old tanks. So, um, you know, at some point, we will have new tanks in this room, all over this room, that I can show you guys the fish a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to look back at some of these questions. Uh, Mike Ramos, we don't breed the Bicolor 500. We breed the Blue Neon, which is, um, you know, very similar. But I, I could see us breeding the Bicolor one day. It's uh, a really nice, nice peacock. And it is, of course, different than the Blue Neon. So I could see us doing it. Um, Finesse Aquatics is asking any update on availability of your Canadian of shipping to Canada. No, we're still waiting on UPS. They are rolling out a new program that will take care of all the import export paperwork that all we have to do is ship fish. So we're still waiting for UPS to roll that new system out. And as soon as it is, we will be shipping to Canada. So, um, Sierra saying, make sure, Ali, you post up a picture of your Madokas in the group page. Absolutely. I want to say she did, but it was getting photobombed, I think, by another fish. So, uh, Superior is asking about albino strawberry. No, um, we have albino ruby reds, albino sunshine, but not the strawberry, which is also, some call them the dragon bloods, albino dragon bloods. They look really hot, though. I like them. Oh, Ali saying, nope, not yet. Yeah, definitely post it up, Ali. Um, Stone D Sasquatch 420 says it looks nice here in Florida. It is very nice weather. That's why everybody moves here and visits Colorado in the summer. I, I love Colorado. That's one of my favorite favorite places. So, Adele, Happy New Year. Um, all right. So, hey, what's up, Don Gooman? I'm just going back over some of these questions. So, Ali's saying, just got the last two four inch Starfire. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, Ali. Awesome. All right. Uh, Superior is saying he wishes he could order from us. One day, one day we will be able to ship all over the world. So, that's, that's our plan. Uh, Aqua Gods asking if we work with mulattoes. No, but it is a fish that we will work with. Uh, there's several different of the mulattoes that we like a lot. And I have a friend that breeds them down in South Florida. So it's a good chance we might bring in some from him one day. So yeah, Dave Patton saying, check out the electric blue car video where they were jumping out the scene. I've never seen anything jump quite like the electric blue cars. Um, yeah, um, Ahmad saying that the Madoka, his Madoka is doing great and it's amazing how he changes colors. I guess I got other news too. My friends from Canada are actually coming down tomorrow to stay with me for four or five days. So if you guys don't know, Spencer Jack, uh, Ray Quillen is uh, two 
really amazing fish keepers. Spencer Jack is actually in the business with fish and the guy knows more about fish than anybody else I know. I mean, he knows the, you know, all the oddball scientific names of fish. He knows where they come from, how to breed them. Uh, so I've learned a lot from Spencer and he's a really good friend of mine. He's actually coming down to stay with me uh, tomorrow and he's bringing a bunch of his camera gear and we're going to go out and uh, take some cool pictures and videos uh, with my new camera and try out some new lenses that he's bringing. So, you know, if you guys um, want to see, I don't know, I, I say I would put up some videos, but I'm so far behind on videos on my personal YouTube channel that um, I need to get started on that. But uh, maybe I'll post up some pictures and stuff on my personal Facebook page, you know. Uh, all right, so I know I missed some questions, so I can't go back that far. So, uh, cat saying the Asian carp. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that where people are riding in the, in the boats and those things are jumping up, knocking people over and stuff. Um, Adele's asking if we're shipping to Chicago in the winter. Yes, we are. As long as it's not like so bad that there's going to be delays, we are still shipping into Chicago with no problems. So Kenneth is saying his electric blues jumped out of his tank. Yeah. Um, Superior is saying any chance of Asian arowana if they get legal in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. That is a, an amazing fish that I've been wanting to get for years and because they're illegal, unfortunately I can't. And there's actually a, a push, a movement right now to, to get them legalized in the US. So uh, Joseph's on board. He says, hey Mike, new member, Joe. Can't wait for the water cycle to end. Tom Collins, who I met in the group, has been helping me every day. Tom's a great guy. Uh, we, I actually got to meet Tom when I was in New Jersey um, Actually, I was in New York slash New Jersey for the aquatic experience. And Tom came to the aquatic experience, got to meet him and his girl. And that, I mean, it was just it was awesome to meet him in person. You know, we've been talking by email for a long time, ever since he's been buying fish. But it was it was awesome to get meet, meet Tom in person. And he's so helpful. I mean, that's what's great about the page is, you know, people like Tom and Ahmad and Steven and dozens of other people are helping each other out and helping the new people out so they become successful you know that's uh the thing about fish keeping is once you break the bubble and and you know learn the basics it's not that hard you know people are under this impression that fish keeping is very difficult and and it's truly not if you follow the steps you know you just can't there's no shortcuts to it you can't go pick up a tank fill it up and then two days later you know throw fish in it you know so hey joseph that's great come down to florida that's a, a good reason to come to florida you know especially since it would be your birthday um our friend james smith came down on his birthday a few years ago so um uh, charlie tango's asking would a pearl cichlid be okay with severums should they be in a group like geos um give me more of a name than pearl cichlid um there's a couple uh, fish that people call pearls so give me the uh, Latin name and I, I could I could recommend something for you uh, Rock Kieran do I like the mason eye I love the mason eye some of the meanest littlest guys I've ever kept before and we do breed them and I've got some really nice the mason eye that we breed but we keep them by themselves because they are so aggressive and it's pretty cool that I actually know the guy that the fish was named after. His name is Leif de Mason, de Mason I, Leif de Mason, and that's who the de Mason I cichlid is named after. So I think it's um, pretty cool. I always joke with Leif whenever I see him is, you know, how does such a mean fish get named after such a nice guy? So, all right, the Braziliensis, yes. Um, so Charlie, the Braziliensis, they get big, I'll tell you that. I mean, you're talking eight to 10 inches on the Braziliensis. And for the most part, I've, I've kept them with other big Central and South American fish and they did fine. But uh, some people, you know, told me that they were really aggressive in their tank. So um, I think it's, um, 
really depends on the personality of the fish. I think you could have success, but it's, um, you know, nothing's guaranteed. You know, you could be adding peaceful fish in a tank and all of a sudden one just goes AWOL and, you know, goes nuts on everybody. So, um, how are the Jack Dempsey's looking? They're doing good, Dexter. Um, so, Joe Cat, the Chitandis are in a room that drops my signal whenever I go in there. So, um, very rarely do I go in that room. I, that's one of the newer rooms. It's got new tanks in it and everything. But every time I go in there, it drops my signal. Uh, well, I'll tell you this, they're really, they're small. They're like two inches and they're not showing much color at that size. So um, we're hoping that once we, you know, get warmer weather coming that we'll be able to grow some up, you know, to adult size. The picture on my website is an adult male out of that same group. So, uh, so Joseph's asking a question, does the introduction of bacteria to the tank from someone work as well as cycling the tank from start, start chemically. Absolutely, if you take, um, you know, a dirty sponge from a healthy tank and squeeze it out, I've actually jump-started tanks here for people. They come by and I bag them up some dirty water and like, here you go, go put it in your tank and feed your bacteria. So yes, it does help, so. Um, Rock Pile is asking, will cichlids or Oscars be aggressive towards other cichlids or will they more or less just try to fit them in the mouth? Um, that's kind of a, you know, tough answer because there's not really a direct answer. Yes, they can go well with other bigger South American fish. Um, but if they do pair off and they try to start breeding, that's when you really see heavy aggression uh, from South American fish and Central American fish. It's usually whenever they, they start trying to breed. Yeah, Mod, uh, add it to Joseph's, just make sure the tank is healthy. So yeah, you know, of course, you know, you know, the person that's giving you the seeded bacteria, you know, make sure that they haven't had any health issues. Oh, uh, blue rams, no rock pile. Don't put blue rams in there with them. They will be uh, food for them. So, uh, rams, rams are peaceful little guys that uh, it'd be real risky to add them into with um, Oscars. Uh, all right, Dexter saying he wants to see the Jack Dempsey's. Let's go take a look at them. Jacks are always pretty much good. I mean, they're very hardy. Are the Jack Dempsey's down here? They might still be in room number five, but these twos, yeah, they're not in this room. All right, so let's go to another room. these guys are pretty big like some really big ones actually bigger than what we would probably sell so I'll get this guy to sit still for me ah. I had him up and my camera started spinning big female there. There's a nice one right here. So 
just let us know. Uh, they should be available on the website. Um, I probably don't have the real big ones, but if you request a real big one, I could probably get them for you. So these just came in recently, a few weeks ago. So we still got them, um, you know, bigger ones with little ones. And like this is, this is a size we like selling because they smaller guys ship a lot better you know so yeah we got plenty of jack Dempsey's. all right guys uh i'm gonna wrap this up but appreciate that dexter uh fitness is quad is saying he's heard of spencer jack I believe he's located in winnipeg yep spencer's in winnipeg um, definitely come down here and visit us someday, Finesse. Uh, Jack was saying he was offered a three inch blue Jack Dempsey to put in my tank of peacocks. Will that work? No, it, it won't work. So, um, you know, you could probably temporarily have a Central American fish in there, but, uh, only bad things could happen. So definitely wouldn't add, add, add him to your uh, peacock tank. So... Uh, Joseph is asking, what's the best catfish to add with his uh, six pack of male peacocks? Probably my favorite, Cynodontus, is the Angelicus. Cynodontus Angelicus. Uh, they don't get too big, five, six inches, and they look really amazing the bigger they get. So, um, all right, cool, everyone. So, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go take lunch, and I still got a lot to do today. So thank you guys for joining and we'll be back next Friday and give us an idea of what you guys want to see and I'll try to make it happen. Uh, make sure you join our Facebook group page and participate in it. We love hearing from everybody. So thank you for everything that you do for Imperial Tropicals. Um, it, it, it allows us to chase our passion in life and um, I feel very fortunate that I'm able to work with fish every day. I mean, how cool is that? So, <laughs> all right. Everybody have a good weekend, and we will talk at you next Friday. Thank you.